Hello everyone, I'm Zora Artis, I'm the Chair for IABC Asia Pacific and I have the pleasure of um, interviewing our first, our inaugural IABC Asia Pacific Communicator of the Year in the Senior Communication Professional category and it is Gabrielle Dolan from Melbourne, which is very exciting. Uh, Gabrielle only lives um, Oh, a short distance away from me, so which is rather handy when uh, we're in this COVID situation. So I'll do a short little introduction um, to Gabrielle. Gabrielle is a considered global expert in business storytelling and real communication. For the last 15 years, she's motivated and challenged communication professionals and business leaders all around the world. She aspires to fundamentally change the way people communicate for the better. Her messages on authenticity, reducing jargon and acronym storytelling and keeping it real have had a lasting impact on the way individuals communicate in business. She's also the founder of Jargon Free Fridays and has published six books, including Stories for Work, The Essential Guide to Business Storytelling and her latest book, Real Communication, How to Be You and Lead True was a finalist for the Australian Leadership Book of the Year last year, and I highly recommend it. I did read it on a holiday in Bali. Gabrielle's clients include Visa, EY, Amazon, Telstra, NAB, ANZ, Accenture, and the Obama Foundation, which is just incredible. So, Gabrielle, I'm just going to show you um, the award. I'm excited. It's very exciting. I know, I'm so excited. So we had planned on um, giving this to you in person at the um, regional conference, fusion conference in Wellington in, in when was it? March. 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 Yes. Um, but unfortunately with COVID, we've had to postpone that to um, next, next February in Wellington. So we thought we need to announce it and we need to congratulate you so we thought we'd do it by video so thank you very much i'm so excited i'm so excited it's finally excellent. happening i was so okay. looking forward to receiving it in person in uh, in wellington in march um with all my iabc friends but um another time yeah exactly so i'll um kick off with a number of questions so i will ask you a few of those Ooh. oh oh who do we have here that looks like my daughter <laughs> yes, it is. It's Alex. Hello, Alex. Hello. How are you? Good. I'll Here take you go. this. Thank you. And um, just knock those and don't Goodbye. forget to sanitize and Absolutely. take it away. Thank right. you. See you. Oh. Bye. And this is, this is real time delivery. So by the time we get rid of these questions, <laughs> they don't... you never know, you might get it in time. Yeah, you might great. get it in time. Hopefully cool. they drive safely. Yeah, exactly. It's not that far. So question, the first question, so you're passionate about helping uh, business world move from the default language of jargon and acronyms to communicate in a more real and engaging way. Can you share a career highlight and what made it so memorable? Look, I, I cannot go past, and you mentioned in the intro about the Obama Foundation, the fact that, um, you know, 15 years ago I started this, so, you know, uh, I was a senior leader in NAB. I didn't know anything about storytelling. I didn't know anything about running my own business, but I knew I knew there was power in storytelling and that it was a skill we could learn. So 15 years ago, almost to the month, I found myself December last year in Malaysia running storytelling training with the Obama Foundation. And Alex, who you just met, it was um, her 19th birthday when I was meant to be there. So I took her with me. And the highlight, I mean, the highlight was being asked by the Obama Foundation to run storytelling training. It was like, how did this happen? Um, but then on the very, very last day, we got to meet, by pure, by pure chance, we got to meet Barack Obama. And so wow. I've got this beautiful photo of him with his arm around Alex. And as you saw, Alex is pretty short. So <laughs> she's sort of underneath his armpit and me and it was um it was one of those surreal moments I, it's, it's still like a surreal moment to me that on a professional level story not only storytelling is accepted as a genuine um you know an authentic skill 
but I was chosen to teach it and I, and I got to share that, that unbelievable moment with Alex who, um, who's studying global politics at uni. So it was, uh, it was just, it was a fabulous moment and by far the highlight of my entire career. That is just amazing. I can't imagine how she felt as well. She, she would have been so excited. Yeah, I think she actually denies this, but she actually said afterwards, she said, Mum, that was the best day of my life. And it wow. was, okay, Mum, Mum of the year. <laughs> yeah, you, you should get an award for that one. So next question, can you briefly share one of the many experiences in your career where communication strategies and initiatives have contributed to positive business outcomes and what key takeaway would you share with us so we can learn from this experience? Yeah, look, there's been a few, but I, th I think one that I'm really proud of is that I did um, work with Aussie Post a couple of years ago. Now, it wasn't just me, there, there was um, a team of people, but. They, what they decided to do was bring influencers from around the company. So, so Aussie Post, I think about 40,000 employees, they brought influencers into a two-day event. Um, I briefed them on storytelling and what I talked about in storytelling, that the most powerful communication medium any company has is the grapevine because every employee is part of it every day. And we can't control the grapevine, but we can absolutely influence it. And we can influence it by the things we do, clearly, but also the stories we share. So that was sort of my pitch to them. And what they did is they, uh, they had about 100 people in the room, all different consultants, all different senior leaders. One of the things they had to do is decide what they called the two-day program. And they landed on the grapevine, which I was, <laughs> I was very happy about that. Because, they they you know, they would, there was a lot of other corporate boring names they were tossing around. And the other thing, on the second day, I took people through storytelling. So we'd grab, there'd be like about a hundred people at a time from all over Aussie Post, from, you know, postmen, for, they weren't leaders, they were just influencers. There was a posting from Wagga Wagga, there was um, someone from Perth, they'd flown to Melbourne and put up in a hotel and he, he was about 55, he had never been on an aeroplane in his life and, and they were just so excited. And through storytelling, um, I got them to talk about the company's values. All the values were new at this stage and they, and they were going through pretty significant change, um, what it meant to them personally. So I taught them the skill of storytelling, but they shared all these stories around um, the values. The feedback after the two days was pretty amazing. But what I was really happy about was that they did their employee engagement scores the employee engagement about six months later everyone that attended those grapevine sessions and there was like over a thousand had on average an increase of 13 percentage points employee engagement now anyone's in, anyone involved mm. in employee engagement no that that's like that's massive if you can get mm. if you can get a few percentage points um then that's an increase so 13 percent increase of the people involved in that um, and then the other thing, what we, and again, I think it highlights the ripple effect stories can have of the people that attended on average, their teams had a higher employee engagement score. So again, it, it, it shows that when people can get connected to something emotionally through a story, it not only impacts them, but then they can, they share it with others and that mm. has an impact. So I, I like that for a whole lot of reasons of this mm. ripple effect. Um, mm. And I think one of the key learnings out of that um, for corporates is that when you're trying to lead change and role change, don't make it top down. I mean, mm -hmm. yes, of course, we've got to get them involved, but the real power in that is they got influences and it had nothing to do with their title. It was, a, they just chose people who they knew listened, people listened to them. So I think that was, that was a really key take out for, um, you know, if, if you want to get a key take out from that. Yeah, I think your point about the influences in an organisation is really, really important because it, cascading doesn't always work. So no. finding the, I think it's the 3% in the organisation that really have the influence is a really important piece to actually make it work. The 3% impact 80% of the organisation. Yeah, yeah. And another, another cool thing they really did too is they brought them together in the room and it wasn't like a conference room. They had it set up with, you know, bean bags and a kitchen and they mm. wanted to make this. And you could see people walk in going, what the hell? And it was so different and so unexpected and it was, um, it was really powerful. That's great. Thank you. Um, you've contributed 
uh, to the development of others by increasing the communications capability and the skill set of those who listen to you speak, participate in your training workshops, and I think I've done that as well, yes. <laughs> or, lead, or read one of your best-selling books. What piece of advice would you share with your fellow communicators or communication professionals as they cope with the COVID-19 pandemic and plan for the recovery to the different type of normal? Yeah, look, my hope that when we go back to normal, that we actually don't go back to normal. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think there's a lot of cool things that have happened with this forced slowing down. Um, both on a personal and a professional level. So I, I would say that as we re-emerge out of this, or is that a word, I don't know, as we come out of this, that we think about all the good things we've adopted uh, and keep them. So even on a personal level, what, what I've noticed, because I, I would say, you know, I mean, I did a lot of travel and I did a lot of work, but I, I had strong boundaries around my work and, you know, I, I think I have a brilliant work-life balance going on. But what I notice is this, for slow down and I, you know, someone like me who does a lot of face-to-face -face training and conference speaking, um, you know, my work stopped pretty much overnight, is that I've really slowed down. Like I've really slowed down. And I'll give you an example. I, I um, where I live, there's a, you know, Princess Park is a, I, I've been running around Princess Park for about 20 years. Um, I've been doing a lot more running. And the other week I ran around Princess Park and I saw this statue both beside they've got like a water pond and I saw this statue and I thought well that must be new so I ran over and I took a photo and I'd never seen it before um, and I thought oh maybe it's new I go oh maybe I'm just noticing things more and uh, when I got back I googled it that statue has been there for 25 years and I have <laughs> never noticed it and I've been seriously running around that park for 20 years so it's just things like that where you know you you think you're coping, you think you're balanced, but when the stuff takes away, you go, oh, maybe, maybe I wasn't as balanced as I thought I was. Maybe I wasn't observant as I thought I was. So, you know, on a, I think on a, both a personal and professional level, we can go back in and just not, just not take on the stuff that was never adding value. Mm. Um, and we've stopped doing it and no one notices. I think from a professional and communication perspective, um, we've realised now that connection, that real connection in the way we communicate is important and let's not lose that when we go back to face to face that that connection is still critical. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You've trained individuals in many countries, including those in the UK, the US, in Asia Pacific, including Australia, New Zealand, Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia. In your travels, can you share some of the cultural similarities or differences you've faced as a communication professional and in your training sessions and what observations would you be able to share for those working across many markets or cultures? Yeah, yeah, look, I think I, I'm going to answer this in two ways. I do a lot of storytelling training, obviously, and I think the most uh, common thing with storytelling across anyone is there's a reluctance to share stories. The people think my stories aren't big enough or no one would be interested. And that's across all cultures. Um, and the other thing too is I often see people go, oh, I hate presenting because they're scared of it. It was like being scared of presenting doesn't mean you should not do it and avoid doing it because most people are. And it's the one skill that if you invested heavily in um, can just it can do just do amazing things so you know i think someone said that every time you present you're auditioning for a leadership role so i think it's a skill that you you should invest in and get better at because uh, there'll be lots of benefits from it i agree i agree um employee engagement is elusive in many com companies or organizations what do you think is the biggest challenge or the problem facing organizations Oh, look, um, Alex has just come in with the award, so she's saying, can I come in now? But we'll, we'll finish this question. I, I think when it comes down to um, employee engagement or what where we're doing, it's um, it comes down to a lack of trust. I mean, we have seen how we've been able to easily move to working from home and working remotely when we had to. The, the, I would say that ultimately the reasons people don't or organisations haven't done that is that they don't trust. They don't trust their people. Um, and, you know, we design processes 
based on the fact that what if someone abused the process? And I think this lack of trust has an ongoing effect to employee engagement because if you if you if you fu- if you felt you were fully trusted and empowered to do anything, you would have pretty high employee engagement. So mm. it's an interesting point because you have. Um you know, in Edelman's Trust Barometer, you, you see that the employer-employee trust relationship is, is one of the most important aspects in trust in organisations. So yeah. that really needs to be worked on. Yeah, I know. I mean, we, we know in our personal life, if we're not trusted by our partners or if our kids don't feel they're trusted, it, it, it affects our, well, why would I bother if you don't trust me? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Is Alex going to pop in? Alex here. She's going to come around the side. This is real time. You've sanitised it. Yes, sanitised. Have you taken it out of the box? I didn't want to take it out of the box. I didn't want to break it. Oh, wow. wow. Do I get a big, you know? Oh, thank you. (laughs) (laughs) This is not good social distancing. Oh, you're in my bubble, so it's okay. (laughs) Hey, this is cool. Thank you, Alex. I am, this, this is, it's heavy. I love a good heavy trophy. You probably can't, can you see, but yeah. yeah. Communicator of the Year Award 2020, Gabriel Dolan, winner. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> um, th- this, me- this means, and I genuinely was really excited when I found out I won this because it, it means a lot. Um, I consider IABC is a great, you know, affiliation to communicator of the year I can't even talk it's a great thing to be part of um and I know there is so many amazing legend experts uh, as members so I was I was absolutely stoked to win this so thank you for everyone who nominated me and voted for me and and felt I was worthy of that so thank you congratulations well very well done and well well deserved too thank you Phil. Just got two more questions. So uh, you spent years paying it forward uh, with IABC since you actually joined from memory um, and sharing your passion for better communication with others. What would you recommend to get us started if we if we also wanted to share our passion for excellence in communication? Yeah, look, to me, I think I, I do, besides storytelling, I help people become thought leaders and hmm. just experts in their field, right? And to me, you need two things. You need passion. So a lot of us, and I'm sure everyone in this community has got passion around communication and you need expertise and everyone's got that. So I think if you if you combine passion and expertise, you can be on your way to say, you know what, I can add value to people. So the comms people are in a really good position to make change in organisations. And the sooner that you own, I I believe in this concept that we all have a genius inside us. And it's not that we are a genius, but we've got genius inside us. And it's normally our passion and expertise combined. And I think once you realise that what you've got could value someone, it could Mm. help someone, Mm. get out of your own way and help them. Either speak about it or talk about it or write about it. Um, but step into the fact that what you do, your years of experience, your expertise, your knowledge could be really valuable for others to learn. Um, and yeah, w- once you realise your value, it's no mm. longer about self-promotion. It's about helping others. So mm. I think just step into that, step into that a lot earlier than you think you need to. That's great advice. And we saw my teenage son walk yeah. past as well. <laughs> uh, it is what it is. It is the what dog's it is. probably going to run in as well. This is, um, this is why I have a backdrop. Uh-huh. <laughs> so last question, any final uh, sharing or comments that you'd want to share with us? Look, I, I think it's touching what I just said previously. Uh, I, work for, I work in organisations a lot and the vast majority of them, the comms people are held in high regard um, as opposed to some of our HR colleagues that are not. So I think if you're in one of those organisations where the comms people are held in high regard and you're working closely with leaders, you are in a position of high influence and whether that, and and use that, know it and use it. And whether it is encouraging your leaders to communicate in a way that's more real, whether it's encouraging your leaders to be more vulnerable, whether it's um, encouraging your leaders not to use jargon and acronyms because we know that impacts communication. you know, whether it's encouraging you, the people you work with to 
be authentic and show themselves and give them the courage to show themselves and show vulnerability, you will help them become better leaders and you will help them become better communicators. And if you can do that to a leader, you're impacting everyone that works for them. So I, I would say there's a great privilege and great responsibility in being um, a communication specialist. Um, and don't, don't let that opportunity go by. That's great advice. Well, on that note, I'm going to say thank you and congratulations. Um, thank as thank I said, you. well deserved and um, I'm thrilled to see you holding that award. I'm thrilled. And, and at one point I'm going to give it back before Fusion 2021 <laughs> so I can get it again. I just want to keep getting it in person. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I think we can make that happen. Okay. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for your support. Thank you. See you later.